Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I'm going to give you a new update on the recent chess cheating scandal here in November 2023, not between Magnus Carlsen and Hans Niemann, that apparently has all been laid to rest, but the one between Vladimir Kramnik, 14th World Chess Champion, and Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura, Fisher Random World Chess Champion, uh, beloved among many of you, uh, streamer, commentator, top player, uh, and so on. Essentially, a couple of days ago, just a very brief summary, Vladimir Kramnik put out on his chess.com profile that he saw Hikaru won 45 and a half out of 46 games, and everybody would find this interesting because Hikaru had a performance of 3,600. Now, Kramnik is taking a stand, and he's basically saying he is not accusing Hikaru of cheating. And everybody that's saying he's accusing Hikaru of cheating is manipulating the reality. He is simply saying any top player should be investigated fairly across the board, and any anomalies in the statistics should be investigated by chess.com, in his own words. Now, in this video, I'm going to look at a new video Kramnik posted today in English and in Russian. We're going to look at Kramnik's newest blog post. We're going to deep dive into actual data scientists, real data scientists, and mathematicians who have ran Monte Carlo simulations on Hikaru's games on chess.com and more. Uh, and that's all I have for you. Uh, this is going to be quite a big update. Also, today is Cyber Monday, if you watch this on uh, November 27th, so last day to get any of my courses 40% off. I, you know, I would have promoted the courses on a better video, but, you know, this is the reality of the situation. So, Kramnik posted a video today. Uh, the title is, Kramnik Demands to Examine Nakamura's Games. You can't see it because I'm there, but I, I promise that's, that's the title. This is the Levitov Chess Channel, great chess channel. They also did a video with him interviewing him in Russian. So this video is called Kramnik требует uh, проверить Nakamura, which is basically Kramnik. Uh, and this one's a little longer. This one's 38 minutes, if you understand. And just a couple of key moments here in this video. This is the first one. Uh, more than once, that it's not if Hikaru or somebody else uh, thinks that this is an accusation of cheating, then it's not me who is accusing, but mathematics, because it is statistics. It's a true statistics from the open source, and uh, it uh, was not meant to be an accusation, but something else, and I'm going to talk about it later. Um, but uh, all those uh, manipulations of public opinion that I'm trying to accuse somebody uh, are not true, and I've mentioned it already more than once, and I would like... So, again, I'm speeding it up because... Uh, it, it's on one and a half speed. Kramnik doesn't actually speak that fast. He's saying it's a manipulation of the truth that he is accusing Hikaru um, of cheating. That really, truly, if I take uh, the uh, esteemed 14th World Chess Champion at his word, um, th th that is, I can believe that. I can believe that maybe deep down Kramnik thinks that like what he's doing is not accusing the guy directly, but the optics of it, the perception of him speaking about it this way uh, it, it can also be understood the complete opposite, right? Like, it can be very, very much understood as well that this is a very strong insinuation that Hikaru's statistics are abnormal and need to be investigated. But Kramnik goes on to talk about later, uh, right around the 1046 moment, uh, why he's even going public about this. I didn't want really to go, I mean, to make a scandal out of it, uh, actually. Uh, the main point is that I've already informed Chesscom earlier, earlier about this, uh, those performances, which I, I was, I'm convinced must be checked deeper, and uh, or any performances of the sort, and uh, I'm going to continue opening up some other performances of some players, which are clearly, uh, well, unusual and requires further investigation, uh, in my opinion. But uh, all the time when I, I was sending uh, some statistics and I never got any response from chess.com. So essentially Vladimir is saying he has contacted chess.com about the statistical anomalies of Hikaru's games and his streaks and they haven't done anything about them. Now, I don't actually know if that's true or not. I, I, I am of the opinion that since Hikaru is by far the most active player on chess.com at the highest level, they're probably scanning his games a lot. <laughs> That's just me. That's just my theory. Um, again, the guy is one of the only players in the world that plays as many thousands of Blitz games every single day to millions of fans watching around the world. Uh, whether they've done a deep dive on those games and a statistical analysis on those games, that's up to chess.com, and I don't know if they're going to publish them. The thing is, Kramnik makes a strong point, but you have to look at the reverse as well. You can't just have every top player in chess requesting that at the snap of a finger, chess.com publishes statistics about any grandmaster. So it, you can kind of see both ways. Like, chess.com should probably be publishing some sort of annual report of, of, of scans of top players, but it's sensitive information as well because 
Not in the case of Kikaru, but if there are top players that are found to be playing at a ridiculously high level, is that Chess.com's responsibility to publicize? Should they block all the names out? I don't know, but I understand Vladimir's point, but I also understand the complete other side of it, which is just because a Grandmaster yells at Chess.com to publish statistics doesn't necessarily mean that they have to do that because it's a slippery slope, right? But uh, yes, I, I, I agree, and I, just like anything, it's, it's never, you know, completely black and white, no pun intended. There was also a key moment at 7.20. One very small detail. There are a lot of performances like this, uh, which Hikaru has, which makes the probability, you know, really, really lower and lower with each next performance, again, mathematically. And uh, only in this month, November, which hasn't, hasn't finished yet, uh, Hikaru had five similar performances. Only, only in one month. I, frankly, I didn't... Okay, so now we are going to talk about the, the, the stats, right? So Kramnik is basically saying Hikaru had multiple monster performances in the month of November. So he gets into that around 12.30 in this video. He does the same in Russian. The, the Russian video is just a little bit longer. It is an interview. Um, so let's see. Video, I will go a bit further. I will explain you what exactly is my idea now. But for now, yeah, I'll just give you another piece of statistics. So as I mentioned, only in November, uh, Hikaru uh, had uh, five performances, similar performances, for instance. And uh, I will just read it to you now. Uh, so that one, which I meant first uh, yeah, in my previous video, uh, my previous post on chess.com profile, uh, was the performance 45 and a half out of 46, 29.50 average chess.com rating of the opponents, few, few guys. So this is where it gets weird for me, because Vladimir said in the month of November, Hikaru had five streaks that were that good. This says in the last 60 days, and when I tried to verify this for myself, I could not find five streaks like this in the month of November. Um, I, I think I, I, I found four or three, which he did recently, mostly to prove a point, and then the others came later. So the, so the other streaks came, like in September, for example. Um, and uh, anyway, I'll let Vladimir finish. And the performance is 3,627. Uh, let me remind you that I think the absolute record of chess.com uh, uh, was 3,300 possible played in five or ten games, 46 games. It's a lot. It's a lot. So it means, okay, uh, it's clearly, well, something to, to check. Uh, I'm convinced about it. And then the, okay, let's go further. The second one, that one is the best, uh, my favorite, I would say. Okay, the average rating 27, 37, not that high. Still, it's, well, those players are not passers, so to say. They can play chess, definitely. Uh, and uh, the performance, I mean, Hikaru uh, won all 55, I repeat, 55 games in a row. So, yeah, that, this statistic, of course, and, you know, Kramnik put this. I don't actually know how you calculate this, by the way. This is the interesting thing about these points. I don't know how you calculate that a person is, you know, playing at a 3,600 level when he wins this many games against an average rating of this because of multiple factors, right? So, so he, uh, Kramnik cited these, and just like in the Russian interview, he basically said, this was just in the last X amount of days. You can imagine Hikaru goes on these winning streaks a lot. Right, so Hikaru goes on these winning streaks more frequently than in the last 30, 40 days or whatever. Um, so let's deep dive into that. The first streak that I found was in September. Okay, there was a, there was a streak in late September. I'm just going to verify this before I uh, talk uh, anymore. September 28th, 29th, um, Hikaru won something like 55 games in a row. Uh, if we scroll down, it was around here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, okay, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, roughly 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, he won a game here in two moves, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, like, yeah, you go all the way up, it's 55 games. But if you actually deep dive into this, um, he beat this Djokovic guy. He beat, hold on. He beat, if we start here, this Kusan guy. Kusan, 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 like 10 times. Then he beat Djokovic. He beat Djokovic until the next page. Djokovic is a guy who is rated 500 points lower than Hikaru. Right, he, he, he's just, he's just, the, the, and, and then he beat another guy, he beat him like 10 times. And then, and then he beat Sunkalp a few games until he lost, right? So he beat Sunkalp a few games, he played some Sunkalp, one, two, three, four, five games. So 
that is just one example of Hikaru beating a 2600 20 times in a row. Hikaru beating another 2700 20 times in a row. Like, the guy gets bored. The guy's like the best fighter in a gym or the best tennis player in a club. Like, he's got to get some, you know, he's got to get some sparring in. He's got to get some games in with these folks. And Kramnik is essentially arguing, like, in some of these ridiculous streaks that Hikaru pulls off, that it's just improbable and it's worth investigating. And I don't necessarily, like, disagree. I mean, okay, sure, they can go investigate it all they want. Um, but there are other criteria here at play. Number one, it's the psychological effect of playing Hikaru. Playing somebody at 0-0 is not the same as playing them at 14-0. After you've lost 14 games in a row, you're probably much higher to lose that 15th game than if it was game one in the match, when you are focused, motivated, and not emotionally defeated. Number two, it's three minute and zero increment. Hikaru is by far, it is not close. I think Hikaru plays more online three plus zero games in Blitz than the next top 10 grandmasters in the world combined in an annual year. It might even be more than that. And he always has. Hikaru has been playing online Blitz since online Blitz was invented. Somebody, some mathematician should go pull Magnus, Hikaru, Ali Reza, like what, top 10, top 20 grandmasters in the world. By the way, include Daniel Naroditsky in there because he is also a very active 3-0 player. No bonus time increment. Hikaru has probably 20 to 30,000 more games played, if not more, if not 50 to 100,000 games per year, per every two years, per every three years than any other player combined. All of those guys combined because it's his job and also he loves it and that's just what he does. He's an online speed demon, blitz and bullet. So those are all criteria that, that you can't just say he won 55 games in a row. I'm not a mathematician, I'm not a data scientist, but those are all very, you know, key elements of this argument. It's not like... It's not like he's winning Title Tuesday with these records, if you take his Title Tuesday statistics, right? And there's more. I mean, there, there, there are more streaks. I, I, I will show you them, you know? Uh, here's a streak in November. Here, you know, he plays the same guy. He plays Artin all the way. And then he plays uh, Artin, Artin. Then he starts playing Liam Putnam. Look how many times he played Liam Putnam. Young guy. He's 15. I keep calling him 13 in my videos. And then he played, you know, a little bit of Title Tuesday. Here he started his Title Tuesday, but he played Liam Putnam until he got into Title Tuesday. And then in Title Tuesday, he played until he made a draw against Undraken. He beat, you know, some guys in Title Tuesday. And then he lost to, I don't know who this is. It's some Russian uh, international master. Um, and that was his streak. So he beat two guys like 40 times. Is that worth investigating? I don't know. Maybe. And then this continues. Like, this is basically the thing, right? This was the legendary streak that Kramnik started with this whole thing. This was September to October. Hikaru had some crazy run. Late September, he beat a bunch of people. Same Artin guy, by the way. Poor Artin. Every single time, Artin Ashraf getting farmed by Hikaru. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just Hikaru playing the same people like 10, 15 times. Because that's what he does. And this is essentially Kramnik's point. And then Kramnik posted on his blog today at 4 a.m. Eastern time. He said, all of you gentlemen, by the way, Vladimir, everybody plays chess. Not just gentlemen. All right, let's let's use everybody. Let's let's use inclusive terminology. All of you. <laughs> what what if there were women? What if there were folks that are non-binary uh, waiting for these statistics, Vlad? Come on, <laughs> we cancel Vlad for another reason. No, I'm just kidding. Please. Um, but uh, this cracked me up. Just all of you, <laughs> Vlad. Come on. What what about the women's Russian? What about the Russian women's team? What about? <laughs> Alexandra Goodachkina are waiting for the next statistics, appetizer statistics of the GOAT. So, um, this is basically Hikaru versus Ali Reza and Magnus in games and streaks, right? So, Ali Reza has played 900 Blitz games this year. Longest winning streak is 17, not a single streak at 20. Magnus, 1,400 games, longest winning streak is 32. Okay, he has 10 streaks with 20 games unbeaten. Now, Hikaru has played more games than both of them combined times one and a half, right? And the longest time he went without losing is 79 over the last, I guess, year. Um, again, probably against 27 and 2800s and, you know, whatever. Um, and then he had 63 and so on. And now he says, gentlemen, crazy to have doubts or not to examine. Answer is clear. Then he said the main course is coming in a couple of hours. The main course, it seems like, is a petition uh, which basically says we demand examination. We, the Chess.com players, ask administration of the platform to perform a detailed examination of Hikaru Nakamura due to his recent streaks. Um, I, again, he's, Hikaru, look, Hikaru has literal speed runs on Chess.com where he plays bad openings and gets to 3,000, right? Um, 
I'm not saying Hikaru is above the law. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that considering that everything Hikaru does is in the public eye, literally playing thousands of games at all times on camera, I am of the opinion that cheating has literally no benefit for Hikaru and would only do monumental levels of damage to his chess career. Particularly, why would he cheat in 3-0 games against 2900s? Like, having said that, that's, that's not enough of an excuse to exonerate the guy. But what's more of an excuse to exonerate the guy is people ran statistical reports. Like people, mathematicians, data scientists, self-appointed, who are not publicly revealing themselves because they don't want to be caught in this crossfire, have gone and said, the chances of Hikaru pulling off such a winning streak are significantly higher than Vladimir is estimating. Um, and if a guy like Magnus Carlsen played more games online, like Hikaru, if Magnus played 5,000 games online during the course of the year, he would probably pull off as many of these results as well. But again, we are talking about three minute, no bonus time. Three minute, no bonus time, no alcohol. Magnus likes to drink and play on stream, no alcohol. All things being equal, Magnus and Hikaru are probably the best 3-0 players in the world. Like, by far, right? And then maybe it's like Naraditsky, 3-0. Now, statistical stuff, all right? Let's, 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 let's time to talk about statistics. Like, I agree with Kramnik that every top player is not, is not above the law and, and should be analyzed deeper and should be uh, checked thoroughly, but I disagree with the notion that bringing this up publicly is somehow saying I'm not accusing the guy. Like, Kramnik's gotta realize how it looks, right? I mean, if we're all just trying to level with each other, it don't look good, because he keeps saying things like, it, it looks suspicious, like, people should look at it more, and I'm gonna bring in statistics that knock the guy out, right? So, look, before you, before you leave, before I lose your attention span, um, this guy responded to Vladimir Kramnik's post, and he said, and this was a very funny interaction, I have done a Monte Carlo analysis on the likelihood that a 3250 rated player would have multiple 40 plus winning streaks against 2900s. 55,000 games. There were 51 instances of winning streaks that were 40 games or longer. The result indicates it's not only does it meet the criteria of having at least four such streaks, but it far exceeds it. This outcome suggests that in a large number of games, a player with Hikaru's estimated win probability can achieve multiple such streaks. Okay. Um, and Kramnik responded to him and said, could you please introduce yourself, Mr. Mathematician? Second, explain the number 55,000. Third, I suppose since you're serious, spent a lot of time doing research, you must know the amount of streaks Hikaru had during a period. Um, better stop writing nonsense like that. R run it again for 20K games and come up, you know. Um, I, 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 and, then, and, and then he said... Uh, the expected winning rate is around 88 percent between 3250 and 2900. By the way, if it's 88 percent around 2900, doesn't that mean it's like 95 percent at 27, 2800, right? It doesn't include factors like psychology of playing one of the best players in the world and being part of a streak, knowing that you are probably going to lose, right? So, Kramnik responded, "I would repeat my questions." Simplest, please introduce yourself with some culture. Faking the numbers doesn't make you research convincing. Average was 2950 instead of 2900. Insulting is falsification and disinforming. Pointing it out, it isn't. So he introduces himself. He says he's not going to publicly reveal his identity. He drops all of this. Now, again, I am not a mathematician. I'm not a data scientist. I cannot confirm or deny these numbers. They look convincing. They could be total nonsense. And in which case, you are all watching me spread this information even more. But again, it just basically seems like a bunch of people are like running numerical analysis. And Kramnik's just like, nah, you're wrong. <laughs> like, again, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Vladimir is 100% correct. Uh, maybe these guys are 100% correct. Based on running a thousand of these simulations of a thousand games, the estimated probability of encountering at least two winning streaks of 40 or more games within a maximum of two draws is 54%. So it's quite likely Hikaru will get some of these big streaks. Now, let's remember, Kramnik said, you know, several of these streaks were 2,900, and two of them were 2,700. And we can throw those out, because they, they're completely different. These guys are talking about the 2,900 level. So Hikaru wins a ridiculous amount of games at 2,900. Now, one piece of information that I am curious about is what is Hikaru's average time up on the clock in all those games. So, uh, here's a statistic. 
I want anybody who can do math or data science or any of this stuff. In those streaks that Hikaru's pulling off in three minute, zero second increment chess, um, how many, in, what is Hikaru's average maximum time discrepancy in those games? On average, what is Hikaru's maximum time advantage in those games? How many seconds on the clock is Hikaru up at a maximum in those games? Or on average, whatever. And I would estimate it's probably over 30. Over 30 seconds to 40 seconds in a three minute game, Hikaru is generally playing faster and a little bit more accurately. And as players' time gets lower, they play worse and worse. That's my hypothesis, okay? I'm not like, I, I don't really have a horse in this race other than it is really, really, really difficult for me to perceive that, uh, that, that Hikaru is cheating. But again, I'm not just sitting, no, it's not possible. Like, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm saying Kramnik keeps saying that he has statistics to provide, right? And, 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 and whatever that might be, but it, it's not really clear what's going on because he's providing, you know, this graph of stuff. And then he's saying stuff like, well, Ali Reza played 900 games and Magnus played 1,400 games. Hikaru played 3,800 games. And my counterpoint, my very limited counterpoint is I think Hikaru just plays way more games and has way more experience, has hundreds of thousands of experience more playing online in 3-0 Blitz. Like, that's the point. And he plays it a bit more obsessively because he's a streamer. Nobody else is doing that. So that's the situation at the moment. Um, I don't know if the main course has arrived, according to Vladimir. Uh, there was another gentleman who put together, you know, the, he, here is the gentleman who posted uh, the Monte Carlo simulation. Um, now, it is, it, here it says by chat GPT, so I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if we could be trusted, but let's see. Uh, Dorian uh, Kell, I guess, Quell, Kell, is a PhD student, sorry for the, there is no dark theme on this website. Um, this individual has posted multiple times on his blog on GitHub about cheating in Title Tuesday. And uh, this was interesting for a couple of reasons. It's, it's, quite, a, it's quite an interesting read. Uh, he basically downloads the chess.com API data. He downloads FIDE data of all the title players in the world and all of the Title Tuesday games on chess.com, where they are in the world, the rating discrepancy between FIDE and uh, Lee Chess ratings and Chess.com ratings. So titled players on Chess.com apparently have, uh, like if your FIDE rating is 1600, 1800, you know, your rating is slightly higher, I guess. Um, FIDE versus Chess.com. Uh, and then as you get higher, you know, your, your ratings kind of come back because if you're like 2700, your, your, your Chess.com rating is probably like 3000, but the separation gets smaller. And then he did a report of the biggest upsets, like Hikaru once lost to a 2,000. I'm on here. I defeated Peter Fiddler. That was like a 1 to 14%. And, uh, you know, Magnus's win rate in Title Tuesday is 82%. Hikaru's is 81%. And um, this is a, a very interesting one uh, to go through. But uh, the, the overall summary, again, if you, if you, if you want to read... Uh, in this article, I analyzed whether there's indication cheating increased after the chess boom in 2020. I found no evidence of cheating. In fact, the error of the prediction actually dropped for the online games. I'm convinced there is no evidence cheating increased after the chess boom in 2020 compared to the offline baseline. No evidence of pervasive and consistent computer-assisted cheating in Title Tuesday tournaments. Um, now, again, when you look at something like this, uh, I am still of the opinion, and, and again, this could be totally wrong, but again, I, I, I'm, I'm not a leading mathematical or quantitative authority. Even though I got a degree in statistics, I didn't go to class the last like two years of college. Kids go to class. Not all of you can be chess YouTubers, and it's also not something you should aspire to be. I am still of the very, very, very firm opinion that if a very strong grandmaster tried to cheat intelligently like once in a game, and wasn't even told the to move, but was told there is an evaluation swing, that is very difficult, if not impossible, to catch. Chess.com probably compares games played by grandmasters against modern day engines. And, you know, I previously brought up the point of previous day engines, like 2010. Like a 2010 bot can probably still beat any human. 20, 2008 bot can probably beat any human. Does Chess.com have the capability to scan games based on those engines? Yes, probably. Um, but I don't know, because I haven't spoken to the team. Um, but the bigger point is like Vladimir Kramnik brings up a, 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 a good point in the sense that no player should be above the law and any player should be investigated. But I disagree 
with the notion that he didn't quite understand what he was doing in this case and saying, I'm not accusing. If you think I'm accusing, the numbers are accusing. But nobody thinks the numbers are accusing, are like a very, very small percentage of people. Because I think most people attribute this to 3-0 chess, online chess, the element of tilt when you're losing 15 games in a row, Hikaru having literally hundreds of thousands of more games of experience than Magnus or any other top player in 3-0 Blitz, and all of those things together combined make it very difficult to see that after all of this, Hikaru would have been cheating in meaningless 3-0 games, like literally, like to take a quote, Hans Niemann recently said that, you know, he cheated in meaningless games. Um, but okay, you know, we'll see. Is, is Chess.com going to publish a, a big report? Maybe. I don't know what they're going to publish. Um, should they publish something? I, maybe. Like, I, again, I, that's what I don't, it's a slippery slope. Because what if the next Grandmaster accuses another Grandmaster? What, what if tomorrow a Grandmaster accuses any other top 10 GM and says publish all of their games? <laughs> you understand where this is tricky? The whole thing is, 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 is a little bit absurd. Like, watching, you know, esteemed world chess champions sitting there on camera saying, well, I'm not accusing him, it, you know, and the response is not what I intend. Well, Vlad, you got to realize, like, how could you, like, how can we not be perceiving what you were saying is like, no, that's not possible. I mean, he can't just win that many games in a row. It's worth investigating. Will he ever be satisfied? I don't know. Will Chess.com publish a report? I don't know. Stay tuned. For another chess cheating scandal update, uh, and um, I, that's all I have for you today. So, Cyber Monday ends today. Get a course for forty percent off. Woohoo! <laughs> Don't get caught cheating. Don't win too many games in a row. Uh, and uh, until next time, get out of here.